Frank, Jay, uh, thanks for joining this uh, first episode, the Modern uh, Workflow uh, series. And um, I'll say uh, right off, um, we've had folks coming to us to talk about um, workflows, project management, and task management. So at the top, maybe I'll specify that what we're talking about uh, would be the workflows that operations leaders, uh, CFOs, heads of finance departments um, in the financial industry, but especially given your um, background, um, private capital, uh, alts uh, are uh, working their way through. And um, Jay, to sort of set, us, set some context for why we're having this conversation now, um, I think we're all familiar with the accountant shortage that's um, been hitting uh, the financial services industry. Um, we're all aware of problems in the market and some of the headlines about uh, where the markets are going to uh, going to be heading. Um, you are the former CEO Americas of Mainstream. Um, can you tell us first a little bit about a little about your your background and um, and, and and mainstream and uh, what you led there? Sure. Thanks, Chris, and and thanks, Frank, for including me on the uh, webinar today. So yes, you know my background spans uh, close to thirty years now in fund accounting and administration. I'm actually a fund accountant myself, so I've built some teams in this industry from the ground up. Uh, so from small, medium to large. Uh, most recently was the mainstream U.S. team that we built and we were just recently acquired, well, recently 18 months ago, acquired by the Apex Group. So I know a lot about this business, deliverables, tasks, processes, workflows, and, and how to build them. And I can share today on the call some of my experiences and what brought me to an ops check type solution, which I'm really excited about being part of. Tell, tell us a little bit more about the importance of workflows because what I remember uh, watching mainstream, what really distinguished the mainstream team was um, the quality of onboarding, smoothly onboarding um, uh, clients. And uh, how did you, how did you make that uh, happen? Sure, no, that's a good point, Chris. So you know, when you're building a business, you know, part of where I do as a fund accounting and administration service provider is we bring on emerging managers, but a lot of times you also bring on managers that are already established, whether they're using an in-house finance and accounting team or another service provider, they came to us and we had a really good thoughtful process about onboarding them onto our portfolio accounting system and then into our processes. So a lot of those processes were manual. You know, We tracked them in Excel, how we're gonna set up and configure their database, how we're gonna identify customized reporting, how we're gonna bring in historical data and then reconcile that data. So we had really good processes. We had a lot of smart people in the room and we would document them in simple Excel schedules and then follow them. And then, and then for ongoing deliverables, we would then PDF those Excel schedules. And then we literally would have manual sign-offs for you know, the doer and then the approval. So you know, as you're building a business, you say, okay, that's how I want to do it. And a lot of times when you build technology, you do it manually first, you get it, you get it right. And then you say, how, do I, how am I going to automate that? So after a year or two of doing that manually, I said, I need to find something to automate that. I do not like these manual processes and running a business through Excel checklists, PDF checklists, and via email, because now you're using your email as a sign-off tool. Like, oh, we approve this, we approve that, here's this, here's that, and collaborating through email chat, which can get clunky and cumbersome and, and, and you can lose and drop some things. Um, so the first product we did was we bought an out-of-the-box product called Teamwork, and we we implemented that. It's similar to an Asana or a Monday.com. It's out-of-the-box. It's very generic, not really built for financial operations, but it allowed us to put some basic checklists in, and we had some basic checklists using it, but it was really in a react. It, it was a product that became a reactive uh, tool, sort of like a timesheet system where you just go in later and then update it. So it really didn't become a useful management tool. So fast forward a, you know, a year or two after that, or about I, I found OpsCheck. Frank and I were introduced in the industry and I said, I like it. The light bulbs are going off. Um, so now with the recent acquisition of mainstream with the Apex Group, it's allowed me to free up some time to work with Frank and expand the use of OpsCheck. So I'm really excited about it. We've uh, recently added some additional functionality, um, to, to a couple hierarchy layers into the system. And we're working with some really exciting clients right now, 
current clients and future clients I'm working with right now on building out strategic workflow processes that are really enabling the management team to say, wow, I can really manage my business with this tool. And then there's a whole slew of downstream benefits that we're going to touch on today during our call. Perfect. So you found OpsCheck, but uh, Frank, you founded uh, OpsCheck. Um, so can you tell us about, first of all, your career pre OpsCheck and how that um, helped define uh, what, what the problem was? Sure. So the majority of my career would be in uh, hedge funds. Uh, prior to that, I was on the sell side, Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, got a great opportunity to jump onto the buy side uh, way back in the 90s for what I consider to be the best hedge fund, uh, at least at the time, Tiger Management. So I felt very fortunate to be there. I ran operations for them. I was there eight years. I ran global operations for Highbridge Capital. And I've also been in the COO and CCO seats of uh, a couple of smaller managers, not nearly the size of of a tiger or hybrid. So it's been predominantly, uh, you know, on the upside. And um, the interesting part about tiger really kind of shaped my career because, you know, we were charged with putting together a, a support team to support a hedge fund and, and probably one of the biggest ones out there at the time. And there was no precedent set. You know, most of the people that, that, that were involved were from the sell side. And it's very different when you go to, you know, for a hedge fund specifically. I mean, they're used to, you know, hedge funds originated from, uh, you know, basically trading U.S. equities, which would be supported by your prime broker. Pretty easy stuff to do. But when they started to get more sophisticated and now trading in foreign markets and now trading all different types of derivatives, uh, to swaps and sh swaptions, there's no prime broker or investment uh, or custodian bank that's going to really provide that support for the hedge fund. So uh, the, the point being, we, we we were taught early on how to be sort of uh, innovative, think out of the box. What is the, you know, let's dumb it down. What are we really trying to accomplish? And we basically built procedures and policies uh, to support that that are, that are still used uh, today. Um, so... Um, you know, uh, different positions during my career, but uh, the part that brought me to um, thinking about OpsCheck was specifically when I was at Highbridge. Highbridge Capital was just purchased by JP Morgan. So having that vast distribution network around the world, their, their AUM of 8 billion when I walked in the door um, skyrocketed to over 30 billion within two years. I'd like to think it was because of me, but of course it wasn't. <laughs> so. Uh, so it was a challenge. I had people in Hong Kong, London, uh, New York. Uh, the team built up to oh, over 50 people at some point. And I went to the CTO. I said, there's so much going on. Is there anything out there that can really help us, you know, me and my direct reports wrap their arms around everything that needs to get done so we can really keep track as we're creating new, new procedures, hiring new people, people leaving, training and all that. And yeah, the short answer was no. So um, you know, we kind of jury rigged ways ways to do it. Uh, and then fast forward, um, you know, I was at now the COO of a global macro fund, much smaller, much smaller team. And I realized that the challenges were similar. Even though I didn't have 50 people to keep an eye on, I had uh, four people that had to wear different hats during the day. So the, the idea just kept, you know, staying with me and building. And then finally, when uh, that hedge fund unfortunately had to close down, I went out and pursued this idea. And your background is um, obviously out of, you know, finance and, and the alts industry. And um, I, I happen to know that um, you've, you've had firms, for instance, come and say, I could use a generic solution, but if the team doesn't really understand how um, private capital works or investment management works, um, I'd rather have something that's um, been proven in that space. Um, what... What do you what do you bring um, to OpsCheck um, that fills that gap in the financial um, services or the or the finance industry? I think you said earlier. At first, you had thought it was building lots of templates or content, but it seems that that's not really what people need or want. Correct. Well, let me, the first thought I had when you're starting to ask this question, uh, let me get this this thought out was, you know, why I think we're different is because I basically built it initially 
um, to, to solve the problem of understanding how a financial operation worked and, and try to build a system to support that. You know, mm -hmm. we have a place in OpsCheck where almost any type of job that's being performed in a financial firm, whether you're a buy side, sell side, uh, an allocator, um, they're met with many of the same challenges. So we built it from the perspective of supporting a financial team. We didn't try to build a system that can fulfill everyone's needs in, every, in uh, you know every industry. Um, so that 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 was number one. And, and it was not not just my background. I'm not patting myself on the back, but it's you know being in this business at least seven years now. It's been the feedback from all the other COOs, CFOs, controllers, chief compliance officers, head of ops that have given me their feedback and their requests to tweak OpsCheck to where we are today, where we really do, uh, I strongly believe, distinguish ourselves for being the tool for the financial sector. Uh, back to the content thing. Um, since we now, you know, if I, uh, when I originally launched OpsCheck, I kind of included about 110 uh, best practices that, that usually a financial, uh, a hedge fund would would need. So how do you fulfill the jobs or operation, trading operations, middle office, uh, accounting, compliance, investor relations, technology. So I built content early on. And then as we started to market to all these different types of financial organizations, I realized that that was just too, too big to tackle. I mean, the content, I mean, just for hedge funds alone, that the you know what you do is, is is different depending on your size, your strategies, your your jurisdiction, uh, what regulatory body that, that you have to abide by. So we decided let's not be in the content business. Uh, I'm never going to tell another COO or CFO that I know his business better than than he does or she does because I don't. So you know we've been mainly focused on making a very flexible tool, understanding the types of work they perform whether it's repeatable tasks, whether it's it's these workflow events, um, whether it's ad hoc, um, have a place to do that, make it simple, make it easy, and then present it and teach our clients how to use it, and they run with it from there. I think you gave an analogy earlier about um, um, Bill Belichick and getting jobs done and then the fundamentals as well. Yes, yes. If, if anyone goes to my website, you can see some of my, um, you know, some of my videos, some of my little corny sayings. But and, and it it pains me to say this because I'm a sorry Jets fan. But yes, Bill Belichick, who probably can be considered uh, the best in the business, uh, one of his mantras has always been, "Everybody needs to do their job. Focus on your job. If everybody does your job, we're going to win. The team is going to win," and that's sort of the philosophy on, on you know, ops check and why I built it. I mean, the senior managers out there, even the middle managers out there spend all their time, at least I know I did, sleepless nights trying to think what can go wrong. And you build these procedures and these policies and these deadlines to make sure that, you know, no matter what happens, we have a way to uh, to fill this, uh, this void and make sure there are no problems. So the analogy is, after you spend all your time building these procedures, these policies and their deadlines, what's left? Making sure everyone does what they need to do, uh, hit every deadline, uh, make sure every job is done and give them a way to articulate, whether it's by comments, notes, backup documentation as evidence, a way to clearly state what happened on that day, where if you did have a problem, you can easily remedy it rather than going back on uh, you know, emails, uh, phone calls, meetings to solve a problem. So that's my Bill Belichick uh, <laughs> analogy. So basically, you know, you can ensure that once every job is completed, uh, every deadline is met, you make people accountable, give them that responsible uh, responsibility to sign off their jobs uh, on their particular work, then I could almost guarantee your productivity and your um, efficiency will skyrocket. Perfect. Um, we've got two. Well, we've got a question and a comment, but I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to those. And uh, for those that have not discovered uh, the Q and A uh, button, uh, we certainly welcome um, your your questions. I wanted to um, come back to you, um, Jay, and come back to the the beginning of the conversation. Um, um, you know, we we have new pressures on the finance industry. 
um, especially as I said before, in, in, in your your background is accounting, for instance, and and uh, fund fund accounting and fund services. Um, difficulty in, in recruiting um, accountants, um, SEC and other regulations uh, coming down. Um, people could argue a saturated market uh, in the middle of fundraising. Um, can you, based on your experience, pick up on what Frank was talking about in terms of getting the job done and the fundamentals? I think you've talked about um, workflows and how they equal the health of the organization. And I think you've also talked about the importance of how you get those workflows underway within an organization because it's you can have a tool but then you need to actually distribute and get that tool being used. Why is that important? Yeah, no, they, it's it's important because, you know, quality control is, is imperative, right? If you're a service provider, even if you're an internal finance team at a fund manager, or if you're a service provider, that quality control on your product is critical, right? If you're sending out investor statements, whether you're internal team or you're a service provider, that's that's the bread and butter of this alternative business, right, is, is raising capital and having investors come back into future investments. So they want good service. Obviously, they want good investment returns, but they want a, a good overall service. And it's a reflection on that fund manager, how those operations work. So quality control is critical. OpsCheck gives you a tool to increase your quality control to another level. It gives you the ability to create individual tasks, like Frank said earlier, or you create a workflow, which is a series of tasks. It's a whole workflow process, whether you're sending out financial statements, investor statements, calling or calling capital or distributing proceeds back to investors, you have a process. Um, you can have makers and checkers at, at various levels of the process in OpsCheck, and you could track who does what, what's been going out on time, what's late, what's open if it's late. You can collaborate with team members in OpsCheck of why it's late, and you have that that dialogue. And then you can follow back up with that, whether you're going up to senior management at the fund manager, or if you're a service provider and you're meeting with your customer, you have these key KPIs. You know what you delivered, what went out on time. If it didn't go out on time, you have detailed explanations without digging through Excel logs, email chains, calling people, what happened here? Why was this late? You as a manager or a senior manager have that at your fingertips on a daily basis. So that that's what's really critical of implementing a proper workflow tool. And I want the audience to know, OpsCheck, we're agnostic to your other technology stacks, right? Whether your uh, portfolio accounting system is Investran, AllView, eFront, LemonEdge, Dynamo, it doesn't matter, Paxis, Geneva, we're not here to disrupt your technology stack on your on that CRM systems, whether you're using Salesforce or Goji or investor flow for investor onboarding. We're, you can use all of that. We complement, we sit on top of that and we help you from a, from a high level view everything that's going on, no matter what system you're using. And the other thing I want to touch on, Chris, is, and I think you mentioned it earlier in the discussion is, yes, our industry is going through challenges right now, in, just in accounting in general. It doesn't matter if you're a CPA firm, corporate accounting, if you're in alternative investment and operations accounting, there's just a shortage of accountants, especially in the US. A lot of teams are becoming global with offshore work and we collaborate with people around the world. We could be collaborating with people in the same office, across the country, around the world. OpsCheck lets you collaborate no matter where your location is. We can create departments in OpsCheck you can assign things through OpsCheck with various departments and you collaborate as if you're one team or you are one team and, and it lets you see that and, and execute in OpsCheck. So I think that's critical. Another thing is training, right? We have constant, there's, there's turnover or promotions or people are doing this or doing that or taking on more responsibility. So you constantly have new people doing tasks. So OpsCheck lets you Take your business process. And again, we're not trying to change your business processes. We're here to understand how you operate around whatever technology stack you have, right? We're not here to disrupt that. We're here to say, hey, learn that. Whatever you're doing, we'll learn it. And we'll help you put that process in OpsCheck and track it. And then what you can do with OpsCheck is reinforce constant training. Think about it. If you have a workflow and you're running a financial statement process out of that your tech stack, and maybe some clients are on 
a hedge fund portfolio so, uh, software and some are on a private equity software. And the accountant that you just hired a few months ago comes in and starts running a process and says, oh, I don't know how to run this one on this software. Within OpsCheck, you can embed, reinforce and, and embed training videos, processes, manuals. So you can reinforce that training within OpsCheck without having to leave the system. So OpsCheck is a change in culture for teams. They have to open it every day to be super successful. And it's a tool that's used proactively. Every other tool that I've seen demos of or we've used or manual processes or homebrew systems or solutions are all reactive. And when you have reactive systems, it's kind of garbage in, garbage out. You're not getting accurate data, right? It's not, it's not real time. It's not accurate. So OpsCheck, when used properly, is a powerful tool. It's, it's simple. It's simple to use. It could be, it could look complex at first, but it's really not. It's very simple to use. It, it's, I think we had one, one of our clients say it's, um, Frank, what's that saying our one client says? Sophisticated, but not complicated. <laughs> it's sophisticated, but not complicated. So I really echo that as, as becoming an expert in, in OpsCheck over the last few months. And some of the downstream benefits, I'll end on this, Chris, are, are just tremendous. Once your data is in there, and not for a part of your finance team, but if it starts, your entire finance team is using OpsCheck, all your deliverables are in there, the downstream benefits become really powerful. I mentioned quality control is there. The reinforced training is there. Compliance, Chris, you mentioned this earlier. Compliance. In, in our world, in the alternative investment world, we do a SOC report, which is a third-party audit firm comes in, reviews your policies, your processes, your procedures, and tests test that on actual deliverables, right? So it's an intense process and OpsCheck tracks everything in one system. You can work with your auditor to give them population reports. And then when they make selections, you have detailed support checklists backing that up. You have proof of your client sign off on approvals for things. You have proof that you had a, a mech maker and a checker on key tasks. And it's all organized in one system. It will save teams hundreds, if not thousands of hours a year on their SOC process alone, Pops check. So I'm a big fan of supporting those compliance deliverables at the end of the day. And again, we're totally agnostic. Doesn't matter what portfolio accounting system you're using. Mm -hmm. Pops check is going to overlay that and simplify your tracking and organization of all your deliverables and all your processes. So, that, so that's a big thing. Time tracking. A lot of accounting firms, uh, maybe not internal fund manager firms, but surely service providers, whether they're consultants, fund administrators, audit firms, they track time. Because at the end of the day, they need to track how much time do I spend with my clients on what key deliverables. And they use that for internal analysis on profitability. They use that to figure out proper billing, market rates, et cetera. OpsCheck lets you track time at the task level in real time. And we can either then give you reporting on time for deliverables and key categories out of OpsCheck, or we can feed a time tracking system. We don't need you to, to replace your whole time tracking system if you have one in place. We'll just feed it real accurate data by client, by entity, by deliverable, and who has done what. That's powerful data for a service organization. So that's another, another huge compliment for that. And then one last downstream benefit that I like to mention is the KPIs. If you are a service provider, you can have you have client meetings, you have your client check-in meeting. You go to that meeting, you say, last quarter I did eight capital calls for you. We did two investor distributions. We did five NAV reports. We sent out five sets of investor statements. And we know exactly what we did on one screen, KPIs. We know what went out on time. We know if something went out late and then we have documentation and collaboration notes of why it went out late. Again, powerful information. It's all about client relationships. Service providers in this business build their business and have success with organic revenue that they get from current fund managers and references from fund managers to new managers entering the market. So those KPIs and that quality control is, is invaluable. Perfect. I'm, um, I have a follow-up question, but I'm going to withhold mine and I, um, first of all, um, there's appreciation uh, for the Jets uh, in the Q and A. Um, I'm going to attempt to. Um, I'm going no to way attempt. It <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. We've got. Uh, I'm going to attempt to weave together um, the first question and um, and the one on the bottom of my list. Um, 
So, so can you share a story about OpsCheck, how OpsCheck did something um, that Asana Monday or Teamwork couldn't do? Uh, what, and then there's a second part of this, what repeatable task or compliance did OpsCheck, OpsCheck help in finance? Uh, and if I'm not over guiding the question, which I have a propensity to do, uh, there's another question later on, uh, security is important for us, what security does it use? Um, Frank, uh, I know coming out of the alts industry, um, uh, security of information, of data, uh, it's, it's important all over you know, finance, but particularly sensitive in alts. Um, how does OpsCheck sort of reflect that sensitivity that a generic solution may be um, less um, prioritized to a lesser extent than, than you might have come out of Tiger and, and, and um, your previous experience? Well, I, I was taught early on in my career confidentiality, especially in the hedge fund sector. Um, it's it's death by firing squad, basically. Um, you, you weren't allowed to tell, say anything about anything. You had to have all the proper controls in place. So it, listen, it, some of these generic tools are much bigger companies than than uh, than OpsCheck. So I'm sure, you know, as far as the cloud hosting providers probably have, you know, strong uh, security as well. You know, we happen to use Microsoft Azure. All our all our data is encrypted, both in transit and in resting state. In fact, what we also uh, uh, what we also do is, since it's sort of a workflow task tool uh, type of uh, application, uh, typically they're not going to be very highly sensitive. You know, bits of information. In the name of a task, or, or or you know, you're probably not putting your positions, your investments, your balances, your client names. I mean, they could appear in the task, but uh, not typically. Um, but not, not not too highly confidential. Uh, the point is, when you complete these jobs, often you have the ability to attach uh, when you create these jobs policies and procedures, and when you complete them um, as additional evidence you may have positions and balances and client names. So on the documentation side, we add another level of security, whereas you're, you're forced to put in a secondary password. The clients are, uh, need to create a secondary password, not even shared with people at OpsCheck. It's just for, for their privacy. And that, that password acts as the key to unencrypt those documents. So you upload them to, doc, uh, to OpsCheck, they're attached to a job or a completed task, and whenever you want to read them, i.e. download them, you need that second password that acts as a, uh, um, a, the key to unencrypt the document. Uh, as far as uh, differentiating between Asana or, or um, Monday, we did about two to three years ago, we did, uh, I had my development team um, sort of uh, uh, do a competitor analysis where you know we, we, they looked up the, the other generic tools that are out there um and we beat them all but let me qualify this on how we beat them or why we beat them i i kind of set the standard so you may say maybe the results were a little skewed so i will admit that from the beginning but i made a list of things that i believed and and i and i validated this with other colleagues what what's more important to the financial sector and then when we we um uh, we compared uh, feature to feature, and then we did, well, what are the top 12 or so features that are more important to the financial sector? And uh, and we went out. So for instance, we have very great capabilities of granting and limiting access to certain people um, in the application by department, or even if you're letting an outside stakeholder in, maybe it's a service provider, an investor, um, uh, a regulator, uh, a law firm. Uh, there's ways to grant and limit access and share transparency that that's that's very strong. The other thing we do really well is we understand how these jobs are done and when they're due. So a lot of a lot of jobs uh, are are due a certain amount of uh, business days or calendar days plus or minus at the end of a month end or uh, end of a quarter end. We can do that very uh, in a very simple way. Uh, Jay mentioned the KPIs and the metrics. We can easily track individual performance, team performance, department performance. Uh, and then the search filtering is, is, is we do that really well. Show me how we're doing on a particular client or a fund or an entity. 
put a date or date range in there? Is there anything outstanding or late or requires an approval? The filtering system, I think, is unmatched. So that's just to name a few, uh, but we have a lot of ways that I think we distinguish ourselves um, from those tools because we're focusing on a particular industry. And I, maybe I can add to that, Chris, you know, because I use some of these other generic systems like the Asana. And, you know, I got a demo of one of those systems and we see it, we use it. And, you know, maybe they have a little bit prettier pictures and some prettier, you know, graphs and stuff like that. But when it comes to the nuts and bolts, it doesn't compare to Opshack. Even the terminology of how you set up a client and a, an entity slash fund in the system doesn't have that same terminology. The collaboration between team members and the ability to build a consistent workflow and then assign tasks within that workflow to either the same department or different departments. And then, like Frank said, the permissioning of a user, you know, we in OpCheck, it's 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 simple, but it's also granular. Like you can get in there and say, this person is part of this department and, and they can be part of several departments. They were assigned to clients and entities. Maybe Maybe there's a big client that you have 50 entities for, but you only have five entities that are highly confidential. So only a certain amount of people can see those entities. Maybe it's a general partner entity with personal information, you know, and things like that. So you can assign it very granular, which is phenomenal. And then as a service provider, you can then give it to your clients. You can give access to your CFO, to your controller at your client to do sign off and really hone in on only what they're supposed to see. Um, so the permission it is powerful in OpsCheck, and it's very much the same terminology, the same language as finance teams discuss in our industry. And that's what really attracted me to it more so than the out-of-the-box solutions where I felt like, okay, I kind of can configure it. I kind of can use it. I see how I can use it, but it's not speaking the same language and it wasn't as smooth. The filtering system that Frank mentioned is, is second to none. The way we can, we have categories in OpsCheck where we can tag categories to either a workflow or individual task. And that tag in those categories becomes very powerful, gives you multiple ways to sort and slice your data for reporting and things like that. And that's really, I think the big difference is maybe, you know, a high level demo of one of these systems, they look good. They, they have fancier workflow screens and screenshots, but when you get into the nuts and bolts, Nothing I've seen compares to OpsCheck. Perfect. And on that note, uh, we just went over a little bit. So thank you, everybody, uh, for sticking with us. And uh, we'll be uh, following up. And uh, if you have any follow-up questions, please let us know. Thank you, uh, Jay. Thank you, Frank. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Have a good day.